Hi everybody, today for the last uh, video for Unit 5, we're going to talk about this problem, the edit distance problem. Uh, so we kind of introduced this idea last time and with this example of turning reasonably into presentable. We have these three operations that we're allowed to do. And so now what we want to think about is how can we come up with an algorithm that computes the least number of edits, you know, additions, removals, or um, letter switches that would be needed to turn any word into any other word. So let's think about this with a slightly smaller example, um, postman into costume. And what we want to do is whenever we're solving a program like this, uh, if you want to try to apply dynamic programming solution to a problem, you have to break it down into smaller recursive subproblems. That's actually been the key for a lot of things that we've talked about. Um, the main idea with dynamic programming that's different is that we're going to like build up those subproblems from the, from the bottom up. But this skill, I don't want to overlook this kind of initial skill of how do we break it down into subproblems. And what we've seen a lot for dynamic programming is we want to think about the last thing. Um, so that's kind of a trick that, that applies to many kinds of optimization problems. Um, and it's to think about the last action that we take, the last thing that we do to come up with a solution. So what could the last action be? Um, if we're turning postman into costume? Well, there's really three things that it could come out to be. One is, so we're, we're ultimately trying to come up with costume. So one thing that could be the last is to add the last letter of costume. So the last action that we could be taking would be to add an E, um, like at the end of costume. And so that could be one thing. And if we do that last, then that means that before then, we must have turned postmen into costum, and then we add an E. Right, so if the last thing we did was to add the E at the end, then that means that everything before that somehow transformed postmen into costum without the E, then we add that E. Okay, um, what else could the last action be? Well, another thing that it could be is to um, and maybe I'll make this, uh, I feel like orange might be hard to read, so let's change it to blue. There we go. Um, so another thing that we could do is remove the N, right? So we, we might be adding the last E of costume, or we might be removing the last letter from the first word. So what would it mean if the last thing we do is to remove the N from postman? Well, that would mean that we somehow turned post me into costume, and then we remove that last n. Notice the difference here. So this first one is we're, we're turning the entirety of the first word into the second word except the last letter, then we add that last letter back in. In option two, we turn all of the first word except the last letter into all of the second word, and then we remove the last letter of the first word. And of course, the, the third possibility is that we change the last letter. So we, we switch um, N to E. And so what would happen before that? Well, now we've kind of like dealt with the last letter of both words. So then what would have happened before that is we turn the first part of both words into each other. So that would be like post me, post me gets turned into custom. And then we do that switch. And those are the only three possibilities for what this last action be. So basically, the last action is either to remove the last letter from the first word, to add the last letter from the second word, or to switch the last letter from one word into the other one. And why is this nice? Is because now we've broken it down. And we've broken it down to three kind of recursive problems on smaller words, plus one more action. Um, and so if we want to figure out what's the min edit distance, we just need to compute the min edit distance of these three kind of recursive subproblems and then add one to each of those and see for, for the final action and then see what that comes out to be. So the overall algorithm that we can get as a recursive algorithm would be to compute the three recursive calls and then um, return the minimum of those plus one. And there's just one small proviso, which is that we have to do one check. And maybe you can see what that one check is if you 
look carefully. The one additional check we have to do is that it has to do with this switch. So if if the last letters of the two words were the same, like if this was um, post post me <laughs> post m e e to costume, then this last switch wouldn't be necessary. So the recursive call would be the same, but then we wouldn't have to add one to it. Um, so the same kind of proviso by, uh, um, applies in both cases is that no switch is necessary if the last letters are the same. So besides just doing these three recursive calls, we always want to do those, but we also have to check if the last letters are the same, then you don't add, the, add one to this one. So this is following a similar pattern to what we've seen from before, where we have some smaller recursive problems, and then we kind of compare what's the best option out of those, right? We've seen this in a few different things, like with the change-making problem, or with the Qbert problem, or with the, uh, the um, uh, keypad problem that we solved from the most recent class puzzle problem, where you're considering recursively multiple options, then taking the best out of those. And that's what we're going to do here. We only have to consider three smaller options. Now, what's different about this one is that there's two arguments, and we're changing both of them. So it's not that, um, so what really makes this problem different and why we're looking at it last is that there's three recursive calls, yes, and they're all somehow getting smaller, but not both words are getting smaller. So like in this first one, postman is staying the same length, but costume is getting smaller. And the second one, postman gets smaller, but costume stays the same. And in the third one, they both get smaller. Um, so the overall like total size of the words is always going down. That's good. So we're always going to make progress towards a base case. But um, we have to th the, the recursion gets a little bit more tricky because, uh, because there's two inputs, two words that are inputs, and they're both changing every time. And so that's, that's really going to change the way that our table works. And, and so let's look at how we can solve this with dynamic programming where we're going to make a table. So if you think about this back to the recursive version, what we really need is we're always going to have some prefix of the first word turning into some prefix of the second word. So where a prefix means it's a string that starts at the beginning and uh, then goes up to some point in the middle or to the end of that word. So the recursive calls are always on a prefix of the first word and the prefix of the second word. So what we want to think about in our table is on the rows, we're actually going to make a 2D table here. And the rows are going to be prefixes of the first word. And the columns are, let me spell columns right, um, are going to be prefixes of the second word. And that's how we're going to build this actually two-dimensional table because it has to consider both inputs. So I'll start to draw this out, and then uh, I have a better looking picture that I can paste in once we start to see how this works. So for postman to costume, um, we always start with the empty string. So I'll write that as, I forget if you used epsilon or maybe you used delta as the empty string in your um, SI340 class. I don't remember which one you used, so I'm going to say epsilon. Um, so that just means empty string. Then the first one is P, then PO, then POS, then POST, POSTM. Okay, so all the possible prefixes starting with the empty string of Postman. And then that's going to form the columns of my table. Let me draw that line a little bit straighter. Sorry, the rows of my table. And then the columns going across are going to be, uh, and maybe I'll type this, the columns going across are going to be all the prefixes of the second word of um, costume. So first of all, the empty string, then C, then C O C O S C O S T Okay, um Okay, so I, I, I ran out of room there, but I think you get the idea. 
Um, so this, we're going to have a two-dimensional table where eventually we get every prefix of the first word and we know how to turn it into every prefix of the second word. Um, and the, the thing that we're really going after here is to start from the easy things, so start from the small ones and be able to build up um, our solutions using this table into bigger and bigger prefixes until at the end we're going to have the entire the largest prefix like all of postman into all of costume so here we go um, and so now we want to think about what needs to really go in each of these table entries there's kind of two pieces of information and this is very common to all dynamic programming problems what we need to have in every entry is the kind of optimum value at that point and also how we got there so to think about filling this in where we're going to start with is the easy part so the easy part is going to be the first row and first column we can just fill those in so what's an empty string to an empty string that just takes zero edits what's an empty string to c is i just add the c so that's one edits empty string to co is two three four five six seven so it's just zero up to the length of that string and the same thing down the first column what you'll notice as we start to fill this in is that there's a lot of symmetry going on because like what we said when we originally introduced this problem um, turning postman into costume is really the same in reverse as turning costume into postman um, where ads become removals and removals become ads but they're they're really the same idea working in either direction so there's a lot of symmetry here Okay, so now let's think about how we fill in the rest of these. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in kind of each row and column next to what we already have. So if you recall from the last thing, there's really three actions we have to consider each time. And those correspond to locations in this table that we're computing that are next to the current spot. So adding a letter from um, the second word, that really corresponds to like looking from left to right so if you notice the the uh, second word is being built in the columns so moving from one column to the next one is kind of like adding a letter from that second word um, removing a letter from the first word is really like moving up and down to an adjacent cell in the table right because the first word is what determines the rows and then switching one letter to another one is literally like moving diagonally um, where you're you're kind of like adding a letter from both ones at the same time so at, at each step when we're trying to fill in each square we have to look one square up one square to the left and one square up and to the left one square diagonal and compare those three things so let's see what this means so like for p to c we have to look one square up which would be um one plus one would be two so what does that mean is that in order to turn p to c i could first turn empty string into C by adding C and then I could uh, sorry then I could um, like add a, add a P from that wait I got myself confused now um, in order to turn P into C right I could remove P and then I could add C so I could remove P and add C um, and that would give me two edits similarly I could add um, well, this is the same thing. I could I could add C and then remove P. So like going from this direction would also give me two edits, but the best one here is gonna be the switch option that I switch the P to a C, and that gives me just one edit. So I'm, I'm like looking at the adjacent squares, adding one to each one and seeing where that comes up. So, so P, O to C. I could um, remove the O after changing it to a C, or I could add a C after removing P and O, or I could um, do this diagonal change, which would be to remove the P and then and then uh, change to a C. So let's see what that comes. So this would be two, this would be two, and this would be three. So I think this will be the best option. So that gives me two. So each time I'm checking, and I'm I'm checking the three adjacent squares adding one to each one and seeing which one is small so this would be three three or four so I'll take three this way this would be five four or four so uh, again 
four is fine. And this one would be um, six, five, or five. So, okay, we're starting to see kind of a pattern. Um, and I think that that is good. Remember that there's there was an exception though, um, which we will start to see soon. So now let's try to fill in this second column. And again, each time I'm looking at the three adjacent squares. So one plus one would be two, diagonal would be one plus one for two, and um, from above would be two plus one for three. So I'll do this one, which gives me two. Now for here, what do I get? We're trying to turn PO into CO. So if I add one to each of the three adjacent squares, I get three or two or three. So this is looking like the best option, but there's a there's something else that we forgot about. So what what happened when we were talking about this recursive algorithm is that we only add the plus one, so this plus one corresponds to the diagonal move. We only add that plus one if the last letters are different, right? So when we switch from empty strings to uh, turning P into C, well, that's a switch because P is not the same as C. But here, we're talking about PO and CO. And really what matters, what we're thinking about here is the last letter. And so this is so what this move, this diagonal is saying is that first we turn P into C and then we turn we switch O to O. But switching O to O is not a move. O is already the same as O. So here we actually don't add one and it just becomes one. So turning P O into C O really just means switching the P to a C and then keeping the O. So we, we make a change here, but we don't add one from the diagonal because the O is the same. But now what you'll notice is that for the rest of the way down, the last letter is never O again. So all these are going to be now done in the normal way. So we add one to each of these. That'll be two. Um, and I think these are all going to go down. And that's kind of common. Like when we're changing postman into CO, why is it a bunch of down moves? It's because really we've got to move a bunch of letters here and then we do something interesting at the bottom. Okay, so now let's do the next column. And here now the last letter is an S. And so we want to look out for when the prefix of postman also ends with an S. That's something interesting will happen. So at the beginning, this P does not match with S. So we add one to each of these. And we could go from the diagonal from here, but this will work. So this is a three. Now we take the minimum out of these. Okay, it looks like the least one's going to be from here to give me a two. And now here's where I have the same. I have this matching up of the S here and the S here, which means that I would take three if I come from the left, three if I come from the top, but only one if I come from the diagonal, because that's another um, keeping that S the same. So that one's just a one. And now for the next one down, um, I could have three from the diagonal, four from the left, or two from above. So I'm going to pick two. And I think now that's going to be the same just um, all the way down. That's going to be the least value again and again. OK, uh, so now moving on to the next column, we notice this ends with a T. So something interesting is going to happen in this square. Until we get there, we just take the minimum and add 1. So minimum of the neighbors and add one. So here would be four. We could have also gone from the diagonal, but that's fine. Here we'll move over. That's three. Um, here we take from the side that becomes two. And now here's where we have the T matching up with the T. So we could have three moving from the left, three moving from um, the top, or only one if we moved diagonally. And what is this really saying? It's saying to turn post into cost, all I have to do is change the P. There's only one edit that's needed. Um, and that kind of makes sense. So now this is how this will get completed. Um, now we're making progress. So we now know how to turn any prefix of postman into uh, anything up to cost. But we got to keep going. So I'm going to fill in the next couple columns here as the video goes super fast. So just to pause right here. This one is a diagonal move, but I do add one. Why? Is because M is not the same letter as U. So I can change the M into a U, but it actually costs me an edit. Uh, but that's still the best option um, from this spot. And for the very last entry, we can see that the cheapest one is going to be coming 
from above. Um, so that's going to be three changes total. And so now we can kind of backtrack. So we can see that three is the least number of edits needed to change postmen into costume. And hopefully you figured out what those are, but we can figure it out by tracing back these arrows. So it's really like, um, okay, so from here to here means we need to remove the N. So if we think about our original word of postmen, let me get my face out of the way. So if we think about the original word of postman, then we removing the N. Here, any of these diagonal moves where it stays the same, um, that means that there's no change. So moving back up, then moving here. Okay, here was a change. So we added U after the T. So we added a U. And then moving back up, that's no change. Here's no change. Here is no change, and that is a change. So that's changing the P to a C. And so that kind of path, we, we can't trace the path going forward, but we can retroactively trace it after we have the whole table. So this, this um, edit distance problem now really becomes filling in this table with the numbers and the arrows at each spot to know how to recover. And then you just look at the bottom right entry and kind of trace that back to figure out the optimum. Um, and so let me show you a different version of the same thing. If I, I actually wrote some code to do this. So here it is. Um, and so this is, this is what it, um, what that same table looks like. Hopefully it, hopefully it matches up. Um, where we get a three at the bottom. And then each of these letters in my code, um, R means remove, A means add, S means switch, and K means keep. So um, I can read this as, you know, removal means going up, K means diagonal, A means to the left, um, K means diagonal. And so we get that same path just like we saw here. Um, and, and not every, you know, sometimes there's ties, so it won't always be exactly the same with the arrows, but the numbers should all match up with what we just saw. Um, and so let me show you uh, just a couple more examples so you can kind of practice this through. Um, I have computed many possibilities, but these are the most, I think, fun looking ones that I came up with. So these are all good to practice with. Um, here's Postman Costume. Um, and there's some other fun ones here, and I'll just show you a couple for you to be able to check your own work of filling in this table if you want to give yourself some more practice. So like, let's look at Lavatory Navigator. Um, if I say edist.edistdynamic, dynamic from lavatory to navigator, and I'm saying true because I want it to show that table. Um, what you can see is at the end, we have to do four edits. And here's the complete table that allowed me to come up with that. So working backwards, we can say that, okay, four removal means go up, keep means go diagonal and no change. And then addition means go left. So it looks like we added two letters there. And then we switched the first one from an L to an N. Um, so that's how you turn lavatory into navigator. Uh, and I'll show you one more here. How about um, a long one, a longer one, like um, emphatically impractical? That sounds like fun. Uh, let me make sure I don't misspell these. So edist dine. And again, I recommend you try some of these yourself to check your work. So I'm showing you these mostly for the purpose of being able to check your own work. So now you've already paused the video and you've tried this yourself. Here's what it comes out to be. Five edits are needed in total. And here's what that um, whole table comes out to be. And so this allows us to recover exactly what those five edits would be to turn emphatically into impractical. Um, so now what's the total runtime of this algorithm? of this edit distance algorithm. Well, now again, with dynamic programming, it's usually harder to come up with the idea 
But once we come up with it, it's usually not very hard at all to, um, you know, we're just going to be programming this with a few nested for loops. And to think about the running time, well, we're just filling in each entry of this table. And for each entry, we have to look at three possibilities and compute the minimum of three things. So that's a constant amount of work for every entry in the table. How big is the table? It's the length of the first string times the length of the second string. So I'll, I'll write it here is that the total cost um, for this algorithm is going to be the total cost is going to be big theta of like n times m, where the, these are the lengths of the input words. So to turn any word into another word at um, the minimum edit distance, it's just the product of the lengths of the two words. That's the big theta running time. And so it's really just filling in this table and then picking out the last entry. The other thing I want to emphasize is that um, using dynamic programming for this not only saves us in terms of making it simpler, making it just be for loops, we don't have to use a hash table, but also actually saves us in storage. So notice how I wrote the words here. What matters is when we're going down each column, we're just like looking at one more index in these letters. If you did this with memoization, what you end up doing is storing like PO, POS, POST, M, and like all these pairs of words in your hash table. So storing the, the, the things that you store within the hash table might be exactly what we're storing inside this table. But the indexes into the hash table would be like these pairs of strings, which actually are pretty long. Um, and so if you were doing this with memoization, you would end up using a lot more space just to store all those substrings. Whereas here when we're building a table, we can see that, okay, we don't really have to store any substrings of postman and costume um, because all we're storing there is the, is the prefixes, uh, so like the indexes that lead up to those things. Um, so we don't have to like explicitly make a copy of the string post and store that somewhere. We just store these indexes in the table. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. Dynamic programming a lot of times is harder to come up with the idea, but then once you have them, once you can implement it, um, and, and once you can kind of run through this, then you see that it's, it's really like the right way of solving this problem. Uh, and so that's all I have to say about that. Uh, I hope that this made sense and you enjoyed it. Um, good luck uh, changing these words into each other. I hope you enjoy my list of fun edit distance practice practices and if you come up with any other good ones um, what makes these good ones to me is that there's some pieces that are similar so the edit distance is not too high but they don't really look like they're exactly the same word so it's not immediately obvious how you do it um, so I think that's what makes for interesting practice problems okay thanks a lot <laughs>